Hi. Hi, everyone. So Alex Morris, who's Donna Adelson's co-counsel, along with Rashbaum, just took a new client. There's a new local case here in Tallahassee that will make, I believe, make Alex Morris famous in a lot of ways. Happy Good Friday, everyone. I love Easter so much. I love it so much. I hope you do too. It's so beautiful here today. It's like 60 degrees and the weather is just perfect. And I just feel like, I look at this. I have to take these to church, but like I just filled this entire bag full of Easter eggs for an Easter egg hunt. Like I just love Easter. Love Easter. I'm super excited. I have to go to the grocery store in a little while, but oh, you just made deviled eggs and car carrot cakes. Nice. Nice. We're going to go, my husband and I are going to go to a new restaurant, newer restaurant here called Charlie Park. Um, I'm excited about it. I've never been, so it'll be nice for brunch. I don't know what we'll do, but, and then I was going to make just a small ham for us. Cause I could eat ham every day, literally every day. I love it. I love, oh, I love everything about Easter. My husband's Greek Orthodox, so they won't celebrate their Easter right now. So I get to do two. No, you cannot. I'm going to church at three. George, I'm going to mass at three o'clock today, so I um, won't be out long. I have to take the Easter eggs to the church. Be nice. It'll be really nice. And then I have to go clean someone's oven. I've been trying to clean this oven for two days. It's a lot. This oven is a lot. I've learned how to take the glass out. I've learned what works on. I don't know why people buy glass top stoves. I really don't. They are so much. So I was in Pennsylvania this past week and I had Pennsylvania food and I was very happy about it. Very, very happy. It was delish. I just love it. There's nothing where I really don't like about it. Like about Pennsylvania. The weather was nice. It was a little cloudy, but not too much. But today I wanted to talk about Alex Morris has a new client. So it just broke this week, literally just broke on, I guess the 16th. So it's been a little bit. Just broke for me because a, a friend called me and's like, Patty, you've got to know about this. You're waiting on your new stove. Are you getting a glass top? I don't know how people cook on them. I think they use the wrong type of pot. I don't think they're using like what should be like more an induction pan. No word on Don at all. Although there was a motion recently, which was so weirdly written to move up the court, the trial date to September 16th because of Rosh Hashanah. And Yom Kippur, which Rashbaum knew those dates prior to even setting. So move up. But if the court cannot uh, comply with those dates, then he said, well, we'll just keep them where it is. <laughs> Not move them after. They must really think they're getting away. Uh, bicarbonate of soda was not cutting this. I had to use oven cleaner on the glass top and I'm still not done. I had to go buy more. It was bad. It was really bad. Where is your last com I don't see your last comment about an attorney's last name is Judkins, not Jamie. No, I had to use for this stove. I had to use oven cleaner. I used that orange, that orange cleaner that mechanics use. I had to use, I've used four, uh, WD-40. I've used everything. And it's still not right. I mean, it still has to, it's layers. It's layers. Layers. Layers of crud. But I'm trying to sell a house, so I'm cleaning a stove. Oh, me too. I have the old-fashioned, I have a black stove, which I would never do again. And then it has the burners, the eyes. But I would never get another black stove. I don't know why I did it. I thought it would look slick. 
I don't cook enough. It has to be literally dusted every day. It's a mess. So anyway, this is Alex Morris's new client, Sarah Warren. Sarah is an attorney here in Tallahassee. And Sarah, let me show you. Sarah Two Tallahassee attorneys are on the other side of the law after being accused of sexually abusing a woman who worked for them in their home, according to court records. Gabriel and Sarah Warren, both attorneys, were arrested Tuesday and faced felony charges of sexual battery in connection to the incident. The two were arrested the next day on a $10,000 bond each, which, let's face it, it's a grand. They had to pay a grand. They had both pled not guilty. According to the statute, sexual battery by multiple perpetrators is punishable by up to life in prison. The state attorney office clarified to WCTV that due to the age of all parties, the charge was reclassified from a second degree felony to a first degree felony, but not a life felony. Updated court records reflect this. WCTV is included in editor's note at the bottom with more information. In March 2023, the woman said she had known the Warrens for about four years. Told police the couple came home from a date one night and made sexual advances. The couple arrested, the arrest affidavit said the woman told police the incident made her uncomfortable. You think? Detective wrote in the 11-page document that the couple physically prevented the woman from leaving the home. Court records indicate the woman was eventually able to leave the house. Directly after leaving the woman's home, she sent a text message to her ex-boyfriend that said SOS she needed help getting out. Court records lay out a year-long investigative profit, a year-long following the woman's report. Last month, testing from FDLE, which is our law enforcement, revealed DNA from the Warrens match samples taken from the woman's clothes. The Warrens are being represented by different lawyers. And here's our buddy, Alex Morris. Alex Morris is Donna Adelson's co-counsel. Warrens do not, this is crazy. So this woman, Sarah here, this is Sarah Warren, who is no longer listed on her firm's profile, nor is Gabriel. They both work for different law firms. She worked for a transportation law firm. And this is Alex Morris's wizardry. He was better off saying we have no comment. The Warrens do not believe their personal lives and the lives of others need to be tried in the public eye. You're being charged with sexual battery. That is going to be in the public eye. If your lifestyle is to be a sexual batterer, allegedly, I'm not a judge or an attorney or an accountant, then in fact, your personal life will be in the public eye. He was better off saying nothing. Gabriel, her beloved husband, that spouse, Gabriel's right there. Gabriel's attorney made no comment. Gabriel's attorney probably did a better job for Gabriel than Sarah's attorney. A mess. A.K.A. Diddy, right? So that's his new... And so they've been removed. Like, uh, where is it? Here was... Here's Gabriel's profile with Rutledge... I don't know how to say that. Asenia, Asenia. Page not found. Gabriel is now known as Page not found. Chicky Poo. Sarah went to, she worked for BMOlaw.com. She has also been removed. Bryant Miller. Olive PA, and they do transportation law, major finance, transportation le legal issues nationwide. They're very specialized, and they have, although innocent until proven guilty, removed Sarah from the firm's website. 
Sarah went to Vanderbilt. Sarah, Sarah should have been smarter than any of this. Are either one of these defendants lawyers? No, they did other type of law. Transportation's boring, so I guess she, I don't know what they thought. But, so earlier today, how old are they? Let me tell you. I'll tell you. Old enough to know better. Probably, or what, early 40s maybe? younger he's 39 he is 39 and oh they live in a nice neighborhood I know where they live which I can't tell you because she's they're both 39 Here is their arrest affidavit, which I think is sad at best. Look at it. Look at all the redactions for the victim. Said, responded to a report of delayed sexual battery. The victim stated she was sexually assaulted by the parents of the child she babysits. Sarah and Gabriel Warren stated the incident occurred on March 10th, 2023. They collected the clothing that was wear during the incident and impounded them as evidence. I don't know if they have any children. I haven't really looked them up. Oh, I mean, they must have a child because they were babysitting. So yeah, I don't know how many children. On March 17th, St. Patty's Day, y'all, he interviewed the tele... It doesn't say what day. It must have been 2023. Interviewed at TPD, Police Department, regarding the incident. And this person, the victim, worked for these people, the warrants for four years, and thought of them as parental figures prior to the incident and would babysit their daughter. Previously, the victim would bring a boyfriend with her while babysitting. It was a common practice for a boyfriend and the Warrens to sit in the living room after the Warrens returned from the date, and everyone would have a glass of wine and talk. The victim arrived at the Warrens' house to babysit by herself due to a breakup. The Warrens left for the date and, and returned at approximately 11 p.m. When they returned, they observed Sarah was super drunk. Sarah went to her room and changed into a nightgown without bra and underwear and returned to the couch. Sarah and Gabriel would typically on one side of the living room while she and her boyfriend were on the other side. The three of them had a glass of wine. Sarah began asking about her boyfriend and the breakup during the conversation. You can read that. She began rubbing her thigh. Sarah then swung her leg over so that she was straddling on the couch. Oh, uh, Children Family Services will definitely have been called. Sarah explained that her and Gabriel had a rough time previously because of Gabriel's infidelity approximately a year prior. But Alex Morris didn't want their public, their private life in the public. Well, it's right here, Alex. Sarah explained that she was upset because she felt left out. Sarah began kissing the victim on her face and neck and explained that Gabriel and Sarah have been thinking of about sleeping with her for months. Gabriel has an issue. Sarah told, allegedly, Sarah told Gabriel to show the text messages, presumably to prove they've been talking about it. Instead, she stated she kept telling Sarah to let her go home and think about it in an attempt to get out of the situation. Sarah continued kissing the victim and whenever the victim would, Attempt to stand up, Sarah and Gabriel would push her back down. 
The victim told Sarah she would kiss her, but she would not sleep with her. The victim began kissing Sarah back as an attempt to distract her so she could get up. The victim told Sarah several times she did not want to stay. Sarah told Gabriel to make the victim want to stay. What? Gabriel began touching. Oh, no. No, no, no. The victim believed Gabriel noticed the victim was uncomfortable and would back off, but Sarah would tell him to do things, and he would, including kissing her and touching her. Stated Sarah continued kissing her neck. No, no, no. No, no, no. I swear to God, if this was my child, the Warrens wouldn't even have gotten this far. They should be very grateful that... No, no, no. It's very rude going forward, so I don't want to read it out loud. The victim stated she felt like she could report the incident because Gabriel and Sarah are both attorneys, and she also didn't want to jeopardize the relationship with their daughter in which she babysits. I explained that based on the statement provided, it does not meet the elements of a crime due to there, there was no penetration. Don't you love law enforcement? But the investigation would continue for the battery and false imprisonment. Stated she understood and the interview was concluded. Shortly after the interview, Blank called me and asked about the sexual battery charge because Sarah told Gabriel, Sarah has issues. I informed her that is sexual battery, but I would need another statement from her. And Blank apologized and explained that she's getting incredibly embarrassed and left out that part because she wanted trying to forget it. I was unable to schedule another interview with her due to medical procedure, which was going to keep the victim out of the area for two months. I sent the pants that were impounded to FDLE, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, and the DNA analysis, as well as a buccal swab. So a buccal swab is in your cheek right here for the victim for elimination. I submitted a preservation letter to Verizon Wireless for the text message regarding Sarah's phone. Gabriel's phone was with a different wireless care, carrier in which historical text message information was not available. A search warrant for Verizon was conducted for the historical text messages. I was unable to read most due to encryption of iMessages used with iPhones. This is interesting based on the Adelson case. Right. So the whole phones are encrypted, not encrypted. So if you just started uh, watching, I'm going over uh, your man. Where is it? Did I get rid of it? The case of Tallahassee lawyer couple. Let me increase that. Tallahassee Laura Cupper in alleged sexual battery of a woman working in their home. Turns out it looked like, it appears to be, the Warren's babysitter. A young woman. Mm -hmm, that's what I'm saying. A young woman who was babysitting her child who got, I guess, too close in some ways to the Warren's where they felt like their rapport was a lot more significant than it actually was. When they approached this poor child to be have a threesome, the child rejected and they wouldn't let her leave. The child was smart. She's not a child, but she is a young woman. In keeping her fabric, keeping her clothing, keeping all of that together, and then eventually got the nerve to report it, but was understandably nervous about reporting this crime because they were attorneys. I mean, you can't blame her. So Alex Morris is representing the wife in this case. And her name is Sarah. Sarah, she went to Vanderbilt University of Law School. So she's been an attorney for a good bit. Both are 39 years old and both know better. But appears to be, allegedly, that Gabriel, husband, perpetrator husband, likely, 
um, cheated on said Sarah. And Sarah is now trying to figure out how to control herself with her rage and taking it out on this child babysitter to be she's child. And my kids are younger than her. So I was reading their report affidavit. So all of that redaction is the victim's name. The victim was identified by his Florida driver's license, stated that is his son's ABA therapist for his son who was diagnosed with autism. Wait, let me tell you. Let me go back because I missed something. Blank provided information for Blank, who she called when she got out of the Warren's house, her ex-boyfriend. So she often would, they would go out on a date night, Warren and Gabriel, and the babysitter and her boyfriend would be in the house, which is in Midtown Tallahassee. And they would have a glass of wine and chill out. So they must be like college age. She was crying and explained everything to the ex-boyfriend. I conducted an interview with the ex-boyfriend as the outcry for the witness for this incident. He was identified by his driver's license and stated that blank is his son's ABA therapist for his son. I don't know who, what that means. Who was diagnosed with autism. Blank specializes in that area and has been working with his son for two years. Blank stated on the night of the incident, he was in Orlando with his children on a trip to Disney. He'd been talking with Blank that evening, discussing his son and getting updates with how he was doing on the trip. Blank called him later in the night after the kids were asleep and he immediately recognized she was in tears. Blank asked what was wrong, stated they wouldn't let her leave and they conversed about approaching her to have sex with the two of them. Blank described Blank as being in a hyperventilated state. He stated she was flustered and she stated she kept trying to force her way out, but everything she went, she kept being confronted by the Warrens. Stated that at one point, Gabrielle had his pants down and exposed himself to her. Well, doesn't that remind you of someone? Hope he has a mole somewhere. Blank was the last person she had talked to prior, so that was the person she called when she got out. Blank stated the victim said she called, she needed to call her mom and encourage her to do so. Never went into specific details about what happened, but based on her behavior and the story he heard, he believed more things had happened. The caliber of his clients. Well, he's a defense attorney. They're all going to be schmuckish, if not best. Yeah, they have a young child. And I hope, I hope that. Um, DCF Department of Family Children was called. Good luck, Alex. I am live, came live for a little bit because I haven't been on. I was in Pennsylvania visiting families. Here I was thinking Morris is representing Harvey now. I mean, <laughs> fair play. On July 14th, I received the results from the FDLE regarding the pants. So it took a couple months. That's good to know. So from March to July, March, April, May, June, July. So almost four months, right? The report documented the presence of female DNA foreign to the victim on the front of the pants, male and female DNA foreign to the victim along the interior of the waistband and in the interior of the pants in the groin area. So we don't know if it's touch DNA. We don't know if it's saliva, bodily fluid DNA. This evidence is consistent with the victim's account of Sarah and Gabriel attempting to pull her pants down and rubbing her groin. So it was touch DNA. Fascinating. You're in Pennsylvania now. Nice for you. It's a beautiful state. Based on the results, search warrants were submitted and approved for DNA buccal swab. Remember, that's inside your mouth. <laughs> for both Sarah and Gabriel, as well as the search warrant for their phone. The search warrants were executed on August 2nd, 2023 on both Gabriel and Sarah. So they knew this was coming. The buccal swabs were submitted to FDLE for comparison and extraction for digital information was completed on the cell phones. Within the cell phone, it was discovered Sarah and Gabriel have been talking to a therapist regarding the relationship, and although it did not specifically state there was an infidelity issue, on November 17th, 2022, Sarah sent a message to Gabriel stating, 
We are making so much progress already just by both tackling this issue with Dr. Jeter. His name isn't redacted. Individually as well as together. I hope your meeting with Gary goes well. I'm very proud of you. Approximately 90 minutes later, Gabriel responded back. I think it went well. We talked about it briefly and expressed our regret. Our regret, Gabriel? You cheated on Sarah. Is it our regret or your regret? Where is this our thing coming from in all these married people? We are pregnant. We are pregnant or she is pregnant. We had a baby. We gave birth. He gave birth or she gave birth. We cheated on Sarah and we are expressing our regret. That's odd. It's very odd. On November 18, 2022, Gary, Gabriel and Sarah exchanged more text messages stating they can't wait to see each other. Gabriel sent emojis of an eggplant, a peach and cherries. We all know what that means. And if you don't know, Write it down and I will help you. Sarah sent emojis of a hot pepper, a tongue, and possibly a flower. Sarah. Vanderbilt. She's a Vanderbilt grad. On November 30th, 2022, there was another text message from Sarah to Gabriel, which Sarah stated, I wish we were ones on a day date together. I'll let you make it up to me tonight and include emojis of a heart, hot pepper, Perry. Peach, cherries, and lips, Sarah. And Gabriel used similar emojis implying sexual intentions again on December 7th and 9th. I mean, they're married, but really? You're at page unknown. Yeah, well, his page is unknown. This is, this is Gabriel's page. She's still listed under the bar. Here they are. Raymond Deal Road, Florida Bar, Leon County. She hasn't changed it. This is just a brief. This is the Florida Bar's like daily news summary. And it's mentioned here. Tallahassee attorneys were arrested for allegedly subjecting a woman who worked in their home to sexual contact without consent. The sexual battery charge against the Warrens is a second degree felony. However, under Florida law, it could be enhanced. Well, apparently it is enhanced, but not life. Hey, the wife should look out. This Dr. Jeter is a very good looking woman. Oh, and that's who he's going to help hubby after he cheated. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, who's Gary? The whole thing is very odd, as we all know. These people just, it's a lot. Now, more. December 14th, 21st, 4th, 17, 23rd, 24, 15, 16, 2, 7, 10. I think, I think Sarah is allegedly doesn't have a lot of self-confidence. Or you wouldn't feel the need to do that. Sarah sent a naked photo of herself stating she was just getting ready for tonight. And Gabriel, who were her clients during all of this? And Gabriel responded with 20 eggplant emojis. 20. Gabriel's fierce. He is on it. This was the night of the sexual battery prior to blank arriving at the house. Nice. The next morning, Sarah sent a banana emoji to the victim. Sarah and Gabriel did not use emojis in an obvious sexual nature again until April 26th. So Sarah and Gabriel knew what they did. I have no sympathy for either. And I think, again, Alex Morris, probably if he had been a smart, he would have just done nothing, right? Because here's Eric. Uh, let me get to Alan. Uh, this is what they look like. Pretty, huh? He's just salt of the earth right there. There's not enough crying for her in my in my expectation. But here is our our man uh, Alex Morris's wonderful response. The Warrens. Now he's only representing one. He's only representing Sarah. Do not believe their personal lives and the lives of others. Who's the other? Sarah. Need to be tried in the public eye. Our court system will be the place we will address these allegations. I'm certain all parties concerned would request privacy. 
Really, Alex? Gabriel's attorney said no comment. In my mind, no comment is the appropriate comment because that was dumb. I'm not an attorney, a judge, or an accountant, but I am a human, and that was really, and a female, and that really was a dumb, dumb statement. Dumb. Your people are attorneys. Your people make a lot of money, and your people used whatever power they had, allegedly, to overcome this girl and not let her move out of your house. Alex should be um, grateful that mommy and daddy didn't take over in this case, because if it had been my child, we'd have a different, I'd I'd need Alex for a different reason. Guaranteed, guaranteed, I would need a better attorney. Just proof that Tallahassee is just as much civilization as anywhere else. True. She looks like Jodi Arias. She does. Good call. They will, in fact, age a decade. Sarah can enjoy her banana bread with Donna Adelson in prison. I just don't know why you had to say anything. And if you did, the Warrens, you only represent one, do not believe their personal lives and the lives of others need to be tried. What do you think of the victim, Alex? I'm going to that trial in June that he has. I can't wait to watch him talk about how the world is confused, but his it but his defendants aren't confused. But everyone else is confused, Alex. We're all confused by all these emojis. Oh my my my. On here it goes. It should be noted no reference of any sexual activity with the victim or blank before or after the sexual battery occurred located within the phone. The times when Sarah mentioned the victim after the battery was on March 22nd, 2023. When Sarah told Gabriel to pay her when he got a chance on March 31st, Sarah asked Gabriel if he'd heard anything from the victim to which both stated they had not and used the teeth clenched emoji. In April 8th, Sarah told Gabriel, Blank has viewed every one of my Insta stories, but hasn't liked one. What in the? On February 21st, 24, I received the results back comparing the evidence collected from the leggings and the buccal swab collected from Gabriel and Sarah Warren. The results revealed the following from the sample collected from the stain on the outside of the crotch of the leggings, the foreign DNA epithelial cell fraction female one matches the DNA profile from Sarah Warren from the foreign DNA profile being collected greater than 700 billion times more likely to occur if the sample originated from Sarah Warren than from an other unrelated individual from the same sample. The foreign DNA matches the DNA profile for Gabriel, 700 billion times more likely. Same as above. From the sample collected on the stain outside, front leggings, the foreign DNA obtained matches the DNA profile from Sarah Warren with the foreign DNA profile being greater than 700 billion times more likely. From the same time, the foreign DNA sperm cell fraction matches the DNA profile from Gabriel. So Gabriel let loose on this girl. And it continues. From the sample 1.3, Gabriel is included as a possible contributor to the mixed obtained from sperm cell fraction. The observed mixed DNA profile is greater than 700 times. From the same sample, Sarah was included as a possible contributor. 1.4, 1.4, the foreign DNA profile obtained epithelial cell, which is like skin. It's your epi- it's the top. 1.5, same thing. We'll keep going. They took a lot of s- samples. I'm glad. 1.6, 
Same thing. We're going to fight that, Alex. From the sample collected on the inside back right hip of the leggings. Back right hip. So closer to her butt. A comparison of the profile from Gabriel to the mix mixture obtained from the epithelial 700 billion times. Sarah Warren, same thing. And the sample obtained matches from the Spelser. I mean, from the outside waistband. Same thing. From inside waistband and inside the front crotch of the leggings is included. From the sample, Sarah is included as a possible contributor to the mixed DNA. For the sample from the outside front, 1.1. Comparison, Gabriel, to the mixture obtained failed to demonstrate sufficient statistical support for inclusion or exclusion, so there may not have been enough. Based on the statements of blank and blank, so the victim and probably the ex-boyfriend, the text messages from the victim showing distress, the potential sexual intention of the text message Sarah sent the morning after the incident, and the DNA evidence, it was determined there was a sexual event that occurred between Sarah, Gabriel, and the victim. Additionally, with the immediate and strong response the victim displayed by texting SOX, and calling the ex-boyfriend, this sexual event was determined not to be a consensual encounter. Good for law enforcement. For these reasons, it was determined that Sarah and Gabriel both unlawfully committed a sexual battery or contributed in the penetration of her, of her mouth with a penis without the victim's consent, contrary to the statute due to Sarah and Gabriel committing sexual battery, allegedly, on the victim during the same criminal transaction or episode, the criminal charge of sexual battery is reclassified from a second degree felony to a first degree felony. Sexual battery by multiple perpetrators. And this is under penalty. And this was Sergeant Scott Cherry, as well as Detective Craig Taylor. Bless their hearts. Bless their hearts. And then state attorney Rachel Jankowski on the sixth day of March. They were arrested and they made bond. Of course they did. Why wouldn't they? It's Tallahassee. Everybody makes bond in Tallahassee. Not funny. Who is his attorney? Let me see. His attorney... is does it say they were double locked in handcuffs then searched prior to transport it's always a good day when that happens march 12th sarah and gabriel voluntarily came to tpd to provide a statement the interviews were documented by Detective Taylor. After providing their statement, both subjects were placed under arrest for warrants. They were double locked, searched, and transported. Kind of love it. Got to love it when people are dumb. I'm good with it. Allowed to travel within the United States, surrendered passports. Notice of intent to participate is Robert Morris for Sarah Warren. Let me look up Gabriel's. I don't know why. I mean, well, I do know why it bothers me so much. It bothers me a lot. I mean, they had clean records. They didn't even have a speeding ticket. They didn't even have a speeding ticket. This can't be their first time. I don't believe this is their first time. I just don't. He had to surrender his passport. Notice of appearance. 
His attorney is Frederick Conrad. I don't know. Frederick Conrad. I don't know if it's smart to get different attorneys I, or not. Because, I mean, she could turn on him. He could turn on her. And the victim texted SOS right after leaving their house and called an ex-boyfriend who knew the couple. Because he used to hang around after a date. They'd have a glass of wine and hang out and have a chat. Alex ain't winning this case, nor the husband's. I am. I, I mean, I think... Separating, having two different attorneys, I think one will just turn on the other. One's going to take a deal. Folks like that with money always seem to be able to pay folk off keeping their slate clean. Well, that didn't happen here. But don't you think, I wonder if this was just a one-off or there's other people involved and have been. State attorney was assigned, condition of release, surety bond, allowed to travel within the United States. And this attorney, I mean, this judge is, Shanafi Richardson, I have uh, been a witness and for her. She's very nice, probably too nice, to be honest with you. Um, it'll probably get changed out between now and then. She's a very nice woman. There they are. Salt of the earth. Worrying about whether um, she liked their Instagram pages. I mean... weird. I think one will flip. And I do doubt this is a one-off. Diddy's case using money to buy off and keep victims quiet. That Diddy case is so massive. It's hard for me to keep up. Like 50 cents ex-girlfriend or 50 cents baby mama could be one of the people that was a sex worker and they identify her as a sex worker. Very strange. But these folks are innocent. And the victim is the victim. Innocent until proven guilty, right? So that whole uh, child still in their custody would be uh, unknown to me. But I do know of a situation recently um, for not the same type of crime at all. Uh, but DCF was called on them. Immediately. I can't imagine DCF would not have been called in this case. Can't even imagine. I wonder if they still have Facebook. Let me check. I mean, if they're smart, they took all that down. If they're smart, they'd stop using their phone. To... I just think that poor thing was, I mean, just in a bind, right? That is not the same. Is that the same? No, that's not the same, Sarah. Warren. Nope. There's a lot of Sarah Warrens in Tallahassee. To be honest with you, Sarah, not Sarah Churchill. Yeah, I think they took their Facebook off. Good move. It's gone. That would have been the first thing what's his face told them to do. I don't know who the other attorney is, though. It's interesting. But I thought that was a fascinating little court case coming out for Alex. We know he takes a big retainer, so there is that. Very weird indeed. I mean, they could have easily found someone willing to join in. Sounds like therapy was not helping the Warrens. Just saying, what a horrible situation for this young woman. She's probably a college student and her parents are out of the area. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, I just feel for her. I feel for everything she's going to have to be drugged through. 
it's going to be a lot. But the Warrens are going to, as any defendant would, go scorched earth on this child. Definitely. Like teachers nowadays, too many women abusing students. Every I know. What is up with that? What is up with that? Is it a self-confidence issue? Are you just a predator? Are you just that stupid? What is up with all these women? It's every day. Every day. I dated. I was 18 and dating a 40-year-old. So mine was the opposite. But I, I don't understand. It wasn't a teacher. I don't understand. DCF should be called because the child was in the home at the time of the crime, even if they were sleeping. 100%. They didn't care. She wanted to make that Gabriel suffer. So let's pretend. Like, let's pretend. You know he cheated. And now you're going to force... I mean, she could have been forcing Gabriel. We don't know. We, I mean, it's hard to believe that she would force him to stick his his member in her mouth, right? That's not really forced. But she could have guilted. I mean, there could have been a lot of backstory on there because she was so angry instead of just leaving him. Like, you have money. You don't need to stay with a guy like that. You have money. And I don't know why they, why do they let them travel within the United States? Why do they let them do that? Does anyone know? They live. They live in Benton Hill. They paid real money for that house. 1560. They live, it's a, It's in Benton. Oh, it's one of the newer homes. They paid $725 for that house. In 2020. Four bedrooms, three baths. It's a beautiful home. With some sick folks sitting in there, allegedly. They, yes, and they are married. They're carrying on. Remember that woman? I mean, she's bawling like a baby and she was pregnant with the student's child. I don't, I could, I mean, I would love to have been an attorney in another life. I think it would be. A great gig. But I could never be a defense attorney. I couldn't. I couldn't take money for this. For this. Couldn't. What is in the water, Debbie? Most of these teachers are in Florida. All right. I, I'm not disputing it. But it's not even them. It's not even like just female teachers or coaches with male it's female it's female students what are you all doing like don't you have a job i i just i don't know if it's lack of confidence absolute predatory behavior i don't know a book called tampa by anissa nunning Based on Deborah LaFave is eye-opening to women who perp on male children. Deborah LaFave was the middle school teacher, blue-eyed blonde, too pretty for prison. I remember her. Well, I mean, that's not the case anymore because they are putting them away. But I just don't think it's cute. I, th I think they led a troubled life. These teachers are after 10 to 14 year olds. I know. And really, I mean, a 14 year old cannot make these decisions for themselves, but they're really screwing with their own lives. I mean, they probably think it's cool, but they're really screwing with their own lives without even knowing it. I don't know, but Sarah's a mess. Sarah's living in a beautiful home in Benton Hill.
saying, I wonder who's going to list it. Because it'll be up for sale soon. Guaranteed. Guaranteed it'll be up for sale soon. It'll have to be. I mean, I'm sure they have some cash, but they're going to have to pay for this attorneys. And the outcome won't be great. I bet they take a plea. But they're going to be disbarred. House was built in 07. They're going to be disbarred. And it's going to be a mess for the rest of their lives because they couldn't keep their hands to themselves. If I list it, could you show us? I'm not listing it. I'm not in that um, preferred, how shall I say? We have nice listings, no dispute, but I have a big mouth. So like this would prevent me from getting listed. <laughs> Let's face it. You can't really call out people for being sexual predators, allegedly. And then take the listing on their house. You know what I'm saying? They only paid, it was a 10,000 bail a piece, $10,000. So it's $1,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll just have to sign those. I mean, all that work to get where they were. And she and he. And now all I, when I see these faces, all I can think of is all those emojis. I mean, how many emojis do you need to express yourself? <laughs> and child abusers convicted are always assessed as a low-risk offender, I know. And they're always a re-offender. Not all, well, most of the time. They just can't help themselves. So Patty, you know, calling these people out for an hour would limit my opportunity to... List their home. But it will go up for sale because they will be getting a divorce because they will turn on each other. They have no choice. They have no choice but to turn on each other. I mean, it's a beautiful house. But let's see who their... I wonder who their um, realtor was. I, I, I bet I guess. Yeah, I was right. It went under contract before anything ever happened. Like, real quick. So there's only six photos. You don't know the meaning of any of those emojis? You really don't? You really don't? Are you serious? It's all because idiots can't walk away from marriages that are over, be it affairs or so-called abuse. Now they reap what they sow. They should have walked away. Who's that? A therapist. Hold on. Gina. Oh, Nary. It's N-A-R-I. N-A-R-I. She is a licensed Marriage and family therapist. She is pretty. Very pretty woman. I've never seen her before. She'll be going to court. It's not like they don't keep their records already, but you could guess at some. Okay, let's go over it. Emojis. I'm not responsible for the outcome of this. Um, let's go. This is hilarious. Eggplant. Does she even need to spell it out? It symbolizes a well-endowed peach to behind pointed finger you can read that for yourself 
Okay. Tong. Sweat. Blushing. A wink. Smirk, eh? I mean, anybody could, like, turn anything into stupid stuff, right? So that's what they kind of mean. I mean, I look, I was in the military. I always play that. I always blame the military. I could turn anything into sexual innuendo. From your last live, I said Wendy's attorney that called Isom was Jenkins. Oh, thank you. Okay, Judkins. Now I get it. Jimmy Judkins. Thank you for remembering that. Attorney at law. No, that's not him. It has to be Florida. Went to Florida State. Criminal, civil, appeals, and family law. Jimmy Judkins. Portland Avenue. That's a house. Oh, here you go. Gary Jordan, a political consultant, one time close friend of Scott Maddox. So Scott Maddox was our former mayor that went to federal prison. Gary Jordan should have should have gone allegedly. Mer Melissa Oglesby, president of construction management and Trey. Oh, here he is. This is Jimmy Judkins. This gentleman is Jimmy Judkins. People often wonder why Gary Orton didn't go to prison. Here he is. That was who she picked? Well, he kept uh, Gary Orton out of jail. Jerry, Jeffrey Lacoste says his name to Isom during March 16 interview near the very end. I put the timestamp in the comments below your last slide. Thank you. Thank you for doing that, True. I have not, and I do apologize. I really try to respond to everything's comments, but I, it took me like an extra six hours to drive home from Pennsylvania this time because of the rain and my week just completely got cattywampus. So thank you so much. I will look that up. Did she, I mean, I know with Wendy, Obviously, the judge did not have an opportunity to hear his, here it goes, her attorney. Here it is. You know, whoever does all these advertisements when you're actually paying, here it goes. Mark Cal, the father of two young boys, three and five, was recently divorced. Her attorney, Jimmy Judkins, said Adelson is cooperating. The news of her ex-husband murder has left her distraught, devastated, scared to death. Mark Cal's neighbor in the Benton Hills neighborhood had expressed concern that he was a victim of a home burglary gone wrong. She wishes. Lee Averett was, has lived in Benton for 67 years and says Markel's death is the most disturbing event. It really was. It was just extremely unsettling. It was absolutely the truth. There was never anything like that in that neighborhood, not, not since. Right? These are so, like, I paid for this. I paid for the Democrat, which is against my better judgment, but I want to know what's going on in this town. 
And you you can't be like USA Today owns Garnett owns the Democrat, like they own most of the news organizations. What a pain in that. Jimmy Judkins, thank you for that. That was really nice of you to send that to me. Of the ABA Journal. Here he is. Markel was recently divorced. Same thing. She's distraught, devastated, and scared to death. So he likes the D words. Death penalty. He should like that. Is he with Osley? Osley's an old Tallahassee. Law firm. All the, the to be seen and unseen work for Osley. I live in PA. I believe I need, oh, you do. I'm from Harrisburg. Actually, Colonial Park area, which is where I stayed out of Harrisburg. It was a, it's such a great location. You can get anywhere. And that's where my sister moved in that area. You can't read the Democrat because I, I don't pay, right? Well, I do. It's like a dollar a month. That's about all it's worth, but it is a dollar. And I do like Jeff Burlew. Jeff Burlew is the one who reports, obviously, uh, when we're in trial, he reports. Well, I drove through Gettysburg to get there. I went through 15 to get to Harrisburg. I love Gettysburg. I don't think people realize how much I love it. <laughs> I love everything about Gettysburg. We used to take my kids when they were little and just drive there for and hang out and have a picnic and let the kids run through the cemetery. I just love it. You can't read unless you subscribe and pay. I mean, or hack it. You could get past the paywall if you wanted to. That's about it. It's sometimes it's not worth it. Like you can go to our local WCTV and get the same thing. It's really nice. I would love that. I love Gettysburg. I wish I had more time when I go to just sit there and you just sit and contemplate life and realize really how small the town Gettysburg was in 1863 and how every home was affected by the war. Still to this day, you can see the bullet holes in the buildings. It's absolutely amazing. It's an amazing place to be. And I've, I've been through Antietam once, which is in Maryland, which is where the, um, the war came to an end, the civil war, or, or as they like to say, the war of Northern oppression <laughs> in the South. Um, but I haven't really been able to linger in Antietam the way I had the opportunity to linger. And even still like Frederick, I, I married my first ex-husband in Frederick, Maryland. I was, I was telling my grandchildren that, and it's just such a beautiful, all that area, the Catoctin mountains, just absolutely beautiful. You live in new hope. Well, that is beautiful too. You know, who I mentioned that when I was on Roberta Glass and I was asking her questions about herself because I didn't know about her personally. And I was comparing Bardstown, Kentucky, because I followed the Crystal Rogers case to New Hope. And she said she used to, because she's from New York City, she, she used to hang out in New Hope. So New Hope is very nice. Um, beautiful place to antique and walk around and have a coffee and look at the architecture. I'm such a fan of architecture as a real estate agent. I love it. Only is having one ex-husband live and learn here done and done. I, I only have one ex-husband, but I call him my first ex-husband. I only have one, but he is my first. My dad didn't think it was as funny as I do, but <laughs> but I think it's hilarious. He's my first ex-husband. You don't have to have more than one to have him first. When you think about it. 
I know. I still go back to this one guy who made a comment early on in this, my little experience with YouTube. And he said, I'm dumber for having listened to you. And every time I say something like that, I thought, oh, that's probably what he meant. <laughs> probably where he was headed on that. Oh, no, I, I have not had many ex-husbands. I would not. I would have... I've done this twice and I wouldn't do it a third time. Uh, he is not my late ex-husband. No, he's very much alive. He's very much alive and lives in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania with um, his third wife. <laughs> and his, uh, that's it. I think it's a third wife. I don't even think they have a cat anymore. You have a first two and only one. Yeah, Jenny. It is true. You have a first ex-husband. And a second husband. It's funny. Latex. No, he's living. How old is he? He's like, he's 10 years older than me. So he's 67. Your ex-husband ex -hubby is lucky. He's not your late ex-husband. I know. It's not even funny, really. But that's what he is. He's my first ex-husband. And I'm, I'm his second ex-wife. How many times was he married? Oh, just three. I had to think about it. Oh, you have a wonderful girlfriend. Oh, look at your puppy. Cute. I took my dog to Pennsylvania. He was such a delight. He really was a good, he was a good dog. And then he came home and he's been a terror. How could a Maltese just like, how can like eight pounds be such a terror for your day? Oops, I got to get going. I got to go to church at three o'clock. So I'm going to sign off. I hope you all have a wonderful Easter. I have more to come this weekend. I think I might record. I drove by Columbia Correctional and I had no single signal. I tried to do a live, but there's literally no signal around Columbia. So I did do that. So um, I'll post that. I'll probably do just remove my audio. It was a mess. And then post the... the um, Video of Columbia Correctional where the infamous Charles Adelson is, is keeping watch. You too. Have a wonderful Easter. I hope you really enjoy it. I hope your weather is as good as ours is today. Take care, everybody. Happy Easter. Bye-bye.